making sure I was recording too. Because <laughs> knowing the week we've had, I would have gotten to the end of this video been like, <laughs> we were talking to ourselves. <laughs> um, hello, everybody. Welcome back to our next yes. installment in the Shadow Work series. And I know the three of us have had quite a week, quite a week, a lot of frustration, a lot of anger. I know Stephanie and I did a video a couple of days ago. Um, and so I think a lot of people are feeling the bubbling up. Um, but with that being said, before we get into the topic at hand, Stephanie, you got some courses coming up. We want to talk yes. about it again. Yeah. Yeah. Just a reminder. Um, you can go to my website, which Bryce, you'll link below, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry if there's like this weird ripply sound that you can hear. The wind is really strong and it's like doing a weird noise on my window. Anyways, mm -hmm. sorry. That was just happening. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Um, so I am offering my next beginner's tarot course. I'm offering um, Beginner's Pendulum, Intermediate Pendulum Dowsing, and two herbal courses. If anybody's interested in those, you can go sign up. There's still plenty of spaces left. It is limited seating, so um, first come, first serve. Um, all the payment information and prices and everything like that are in um, or are on the website. Uh, bold, you can see it, um, along with my policy, my payment policy, and all that kind of stuff. So go check it out. If you're interested, you can sign up. Looking forward to running more courses as my first course went very, very um, well. It was a success. So I'm going to continue to go ahead and do that. They were very brave test. I, mean, I don't want to say the word dummies because they weren't dummies at all. But um, <laughs> it was my uh, first, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Someone help me out here. <laughs> it, was your, it was your premier online course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was your maiden flight. Yes, it was, yes, it was. You it broke was the champagne voyage. bottle over the ship. There we go. You popped your chair. Yeah, that. So, <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, Bryce, sure. As I wear red, I got red. <laughs> you are. I almost spat tea all over my computer. <laughs> So anybody wants to go sign up for those courses, um, go ahead, go check that out. Also, never mind, I'm going to leave that next announcement out. I'm being told not quite yet. Never mind. I'll okay. leave that out. And um, Emmy and I, our yoga course, of course, Emmy is going to be a part of that yoga course during the Reiki. And I haven't, I've kind of kept you abreast, Emmy, but we're selling out of spots really quickly. There's only a few spots left. So um, I just sent out the last of some of my emails today, welcoming people, sending them the link to the Yoga Sutras book. So if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, go ahead and book that spot and I'll send you a link to the Sutras book um, that we're going to be using. Again, that, that starts on November 20th. Um, when we do run out of seating, I will just take down that portion of the website so people won't be able to book. So if you're able to book right now, that means you got a spot. Okay, so don't be worried. Um, we're not going to take your money and then be like, no, too bad. No. So, um, so if you're able to book, you got a spot guys. And I'm super excited. November 20th. Sorry, as I blow my nose. I'm now finishing up too. On top of that, we have a 30 day, um, shadow work challenge coming up for the month of November. And I'm just finishing that up as well. Or I was just working on that before we started today. Um, that is free. That's for a lot of you guys who have expressed interest in jump starting this. You're seeing exercise in a whole different light which is amazing that's what our <laughs> is. and so people need some people need some guidance and so what i'm doing is i'm putting up um a calendar for the month of november with are 30 days and each day there's going to be an activity for you to do um first day 45 minute bar exercise and then some journaling there's going to be some other youtube links to other things it's not going to be just yoga it's going to be all sorts of different exercises for you and um there's gonna be some journaling activity involved other stuff like that and if you sign up if you, once i have it completed i'm going to put another email address up for the challenges you'll email me i'll send you the whole month it's free of charge all you need is the internet and a journal and every single person who does the challenge your name will go into a raffle and a few people will win some prizes for just doing the challenge and this will be a way for uh you know we'll have some bonus challenges like one of the bonus challenges is going to be if you're not a vegetarian to be to take like five days out of the week to not eat meat only eat on the wind day with uh, the weekends and see how you feel changing drinking 
you know, eight glasses of water a day, all that kind of stuff, just some different, some bonus challenges as well, but it's just for you. So if you do the challenge, you're not going to have to share your journal entry with anyone. No one's going to watch you work out. This is just something for you to do by yourself and to explore yourself and give you kind of a guide to help you because we can sit here on YouTube all we want and talk about the shadow work and the journey and exercise, mm. but you are the one that has to pick up, pick it up and actually do it. And you can bring out, take a horse to water, but you can't make it, him drink. And a lot of you guys are doing it. And so, um, and that's amazing. And I'm so excited that people are taking a different perspective of exercise because that was one of my main goals of really talking about this aches and pains are okay. Um, and what we wanted to cover today I actually was reading in this, uh, the return of the divine Sophia for next week. And I thought this was so fascinating because she talks about ritual and ceremony. And she says in the book, ritual and ceremony are both ways of calling in spiritual energies in order to communicate with the divine ritual is something that is done the same way over and over passed down from generation to generation, like a sacred formula. So that's like the Ashtanga practice. It's been passed down from generation for generation. It's the formula. That's the ritual. Every morning I get up and make my bed. That's a ritual. So things we do repetitively become ritual. Now, ceremony is different. Ceremony, however, is an ever-changing living vehicle that is never done the same way twice. It rises spontaneously from the needs of the moment and thus can be powerful, heartfelt, and directly inspired by spirit. So the Ashtanga <laughs> practice itself is both both ritual and ceremony. So what do I mean by this? The practice is the same every day, but the relationship with the practice changes. Yep. It's a different practice every day because you're a different person every day. You're experiencing different it's things. Love relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so, but that is, that's where the information lies. And that's the beauty is that two people can be doing the same practice every single day and every single day have different experiences depending on what God. And when they say spirit, Shanti said this this morning, when they say spirit, they're talking about God, what God is trying to show you about yourself that you need to, you need to, um, to look at this also brings about, I've talked about this a lot this week on my channel. And I think we're going to kind of bring it into this conversation as well. Transcendence and imminence. Imminence is what the Christ Yahshua taught Imminence is what yoga teaches. Imminence is what Buddhism teaches. Transcendence, however, is what the Abrahamic faiths teach. What is transcendence? Transcendence means that you are taught that God is outside of you and far away from you. And nothing around you is holy. Everything's satanic and ugly and gross. And you, have, you need something to get to God. That you by yourself can't do, can't get to God because you're so low, you're such a piece of shit that you can't. You have to hope and pray that just doing these things or accepting Jesus is enough to maybe see God when you die. And they teach you a schizophrenic, like you have this jealous God that also re really really loves you, that causes mental imbalance, that causes jealousy, it causes shame, it causes guilt. Can I bring up something really quickly that I found out this morning that yeah. kind of goes with this? Now, most subscribers are, I don't like to call you guys subscribers. We don't like to call you that, but audience, okay, the audience. I have not doused on my dousing board in forever. I hardly ever do. Today, I I just was, just for shits and giggles, like, why? What's the biggest reason I've lost my hair? Because I've lost my hair three different times in my life. And it said, fear. Well, my biggest fear used to be death. It was such a driving fear. Literally, I could not drive at times. I've talked about this before. It, I was in a prison cell of my own mind, trapped by this fear. And that fear came from the church. Absolutely. And they do it on purpose. Yeah. You know, um, they, they, they need you to need them. They need you to need them. Right. And this is not what Yahshua taught. Yahshua taught imminence. Well, imminence also is this, this idea that God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's a loving God. He's in the trees. He's in the animals. He's in us, you know? And so when you live with the idea of eminence, that you're not separate from God, you never were separated from God. You treat people better. You treat yourself better. Now let's talk about the law of karma and all karma is, is cause and effect. That's all it is. Because I turned my computer on, 
the karma of me turning my computer on means I can film with Stephanie and Emmy. See how simple that is? That's what karma is. It's not some bibbity boppity boo hoo boo joo boo word. It literally just means cause and effect. So cause and effect with karma also means your work. And so when things arise in your life that give you that friction, that heat, that plot twist, that interesting moment in transcendence, you are taught to believe that God is punishing you for something. But in eminence, you see that friction as a gift in order to learn more about yourself. And so you don't carry the shame or the guilt about being human because every no one's perfect. We're, we're all going to fuck up. Like, that's just that's that's what being human is about. It's about well, you start to wonder, too, when you're walking into church every Sunday, you're like, OK, so it says I'm not going to be perfect. And I am born in a sinful nature and stuff like that. So this whole born again concept is how I make it to heaven. So what is the, where's the line that God draws if you go to heaven or hell? You know what I mean? And do you know how many times I asked pastors that and they really couldn't answer me? Because we aren't born in a sinful nature. Yeah. We aren't. That's Can you guys hear that? No. Okay, good. It's really loud. No, no, we aren't. We are not born in a sinful nature. Sin just means to not know who, who you are. Like to forget who you are. So we've, we've forgotten that we're a soul and we need these things. And so let's, let's relate that back to exercise now and why I believe and what our, I, I feel like our ancestors knew that the human body was the greatest tool we could have possibly have to teach us these things. And this is why, in my opinion, the church teaches against yoga, because if the church uh, supported the practice of yoga they're on the transcendent business model. The imminent business model is not good for business. Mm -hmm. Having people do yoga and understand actual liberation and feeling the love of God is not a good business model for the church. Follow the money. But let's talk about the karma we experience within our own bodies. And this is what I'm so excited about because so many people are now realizing that it's okay to feel pain in your practice it, that you're supposed to it's okay to be uncomfortable how many times ladies before this did you yeah. think if you felt uncomfortable or pain in a workout you had to stop working out yeah all the time all the time mm. i was always told i was always told to listen to your body and so any when what that meant to me without explanation is that oh this doesn't feel good i need to listen to my body and stop but what really needed to be done was there's in yoga, they say there's two teachers. There are there, right, Bryce. There's two three teachers, teachers, three teachers. Okay. So muscle soreness, tendon, ligament soreness is good pain. Mm -hmm. Joint pain, take a step back. That's yeah. a different, it's a different teacher. So once you understand what is okay and what is not, you can accept that and and push through it. One thing that's been coming up for me. I've been having a lot of pain in my shoulders, a lot of pain. Now I have consistently been going to a chiropractor and getting uh, 15 to 20 minute massages before my adjustments to work on my upper back and shoulders because there are so many knots and it's so tight that um, it's practically immovable. And another thing too, I can't do the upward dog pose just yet because my shoulders are so weak and my back is my upper back is so immovable that I can't uh, form the curve and my neck and my lower back is overcompensating and collapsing. And so until I get my shoulders strong enough to be able to hold my body up in a manner where I can get that curve in my upper back, um, I just have to work through that. Yeah. And I swear, you guys, my shoulders have hurt so bad. I swear they were going to bleed. I've had bruises on them. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's okay. I can still move. I don't have joint pain. It's just muscle and ligament and tendon. And in my journaling and in my meditation after my practices, what's coming up, you're holding too much, Emmy. You're holding too much. You're holding too much right. on your shoulders. And at seven years old, I had a, I was in a car accident and I, I broke the um, left side of my collarbone. Ever since then, I have had posture and shoulder issues. So there's, I think that's when it started actually. And 
I've done shadow work for five years. I've been in 12 step recovery programs. I've been in other classes. I've read so many books. I've been to um, counseling. I've done EDMR. I've been, I've done trauma recovery. Like I have done a lot of work on myself. Not until yoga did this stuff come up. Okay. So guys, there is so many things you can do for shadow work, whatever you feel drawn to or led to pursue that. There's no one right way. There's no one recipe that is what you're supposed to do. And I know it's hard, but try not to look outside of yourself for what to do. Look outside of yourself for guidance. You know, we all need to help each other and guide each other, but go within, do the meditation and the journaling and ask yourself, ask God, what should I do? Where, where should I go? What path should I follow? And people will come into your life. A video will pop up. Some kind of website will pop up. Somebody will say something that triggers something. And then just, just follow that. That's using your discernment, using your intuition. And it's, it's beautiful. It's been painful. The, my yoga path so far has been painful, but I would not trade it for anything. Yeah. So much stuff has come up. So many changes have already taken place. You guys, I'm remembering my dreams again. I haven't remembered dreams since 2018. I've had the same thing start to happen to me because I've always remembered my dreams. But in the last, I would say seven, eight months, it's almost like blank. Once in a great while, I'll get a profound dream where I'm like, I'll, I always text Bryce what those dreams are. <laughs> But anyways, uh, I've been getting crazy lucid dreams. I mean, sometimes I remember them. Sometimes I don't, but I still kind of can feel them after I wake up like, oh, you okay. Got that. So um, that's interesting. You said that. I'll tell you too. I don't know if you guys girls have experienced this yet. So there's a phenomenon that happens within yoga practitioners. Well, where you will start to dream about yourself doing yoga asana. Why you're just like, yeah, I, I've had that. Yeah. Well, what typically happens is sometimes you'll be dreaming about a breakthrough, about like all of a sudden your leg goes behind your head, or all of a sudden you do a jump back, jump through, no problem. And what that's telling you is you're about to break through. And that's happened. It's a phenomenon that happens. You start to dream about it. It starts to show you. It's like, it's like spirit is showing you in your consciousness what's about to happen, what's about to break and hunt, unhin, un, unstick itself on, from, from whatever's stuck in the body. And, and I, I, you know, that's uh, when, when you say listen to your body. So as someone who's from traditional yoga, when I hear that, that tells me to listen to the pain because the pain is a message. Doesn't mean to stop. And I tell my students all the time, there's a difference between an unhealthy pain and a healthy pain. And a healthy pain, it's a vicinity. It's around the knee. It's around the shoulder. It's around the hip. But when something is wrong and you need to pull back, you can point to an exact spot where it hurts. Yeah. And that's when you talk to the teacher. You don't quit. You modify. It's like in the video I did with um, Emmy and Stephanie. They're the After the second posture of primary series, Ardha Bada Padmottanasana, and they were standing and I had them pull their foot in. I say, if you can reach your hand around and catch your foot, then it's okay to do the fold portion of it that I showed in the video. If you cannot catch your foot yet, that means your knee does not have enough space to take that fold. And so don't fold. Now, when we say the injury is part of the teacher, people who have an ego issue will fold anyway, ignoring the teaching. And then what happens? They blow their knee out. And that my ego. That, that's that's him showing, okay, your body saying this is what happens when the ego takes over. And I think sometimes when people hear that term, listen to your body, they stop listening to the, their body and they start to listen to their ego instead. Yes. So yes. Yes. either hard. that or they'll use either that or I know this it's true for me. Either that or they'll use it as an excuse not to work. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I I it's, it's, I see it all the time. People come in and they define themselves by whatever health issues or injuries they think they have. And I need to know that as a teacher in my life classes. Yes, of course, I need to know those things because that's going to inform how I teach you. But 
when you define yourself as having these things like and that's it that's just why you can't do something then there's only going to so be so far i can teach you because you're holding on to the illusion you're holding on to the illusion that you have knee problems well what do knee problems represent for most most people it represents a fear of the future so the knee your body is telling you you have a fear of the future that you need to deal with and if you don't deal with it the knee is just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until you finally do deal with it you know if you have a shoulder issue it depends on which side it depends there's all sorts of de what depends on what's happening but it's it's telling it was telling her emmy's body has been trying to communicate with her an imbalance and yeah just because so that's a good example just because emmy's got some shoulder issues going on i'm not going to push her into postures that her body isn't ready to take on yet because they need it needs to course correct some things and so we pull it back and we work with it's like it's like putting a puzzle together we work with one puzzle piece and then we pull the other puzzle piece in and connect and then we pull the other puzzle piece in and connect you know if a student comes in and just haphazardly wants to just you know rambo through the practice and then there's nothing there's no teaching there's no learning happening if they're just doing stuff just to like pull their arm off to take the bind and that is the ego again that's not the that's not the soul you know, and that's why, and that's why it doesn't matter what level, level your asana is because you, you're where you need to be to work on whatever issue you're working on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what the yoga school is providing you. No one in the Mysore room gives a shit if you were a gymnast at one point, or if you were a cheerleader. It's not a competition. Well, it's not why we're here anyway. We're no. not here to work on the body's just the tool. Yeah. That's all it is, is the tool. And that's what Martin, it's a way to bring yourself back into yourself and focus on yourself mm -hmm. and to clear what needs to be cleared. It's not, you're not going to an event and, and demonstrating and showing off. It's not yeah. a show off thing at all. Nobody's looking at you anyway in the Mysore and, room. They're too and, busy. And I like to say this too, with, with um, being successful in life. And this, this isn't just for exercise or whatever. This is, this is any avenue you take in your life. In order to in order to succeed, you must fail mm -hmm. first. And it's like a baby. A baby crawls and then they get the guts to to stand up for the first time and take their first steps. Well, they're not just gonna walk, they're gonna fall a couple times. They're gonna fall several times. Mm -hmm. But the baby never gives up. They continue to fall, get themselves back up. And the more that they do it, the better they become. It's the same with yoga. It's the same with a business. It's the same with anything that you go into in life, right? So expect to suck at, um, uh, at, an, um, at a pose or asana, you know, because that's part of the journey is, you know, working through it. Am I and saying that? Okay. Yeah, and that's why it's really dangerous to try to choreograph your own yoga practice now first of all it's dangerous because if you don't know counter pose ca uh, pose counter pose neutral if you don't know that patterning you're going to come out of that yoga practice wackadoodle because energy is not settled it's not my word no whack it well and, and <laughs> that's my word this is about vocabulary yes express <laughs> um and secondly if you're choreographing if you're choreographing your own practice you're not going to put in poses you don't like mm. yeah that's all true. the poses you like and what you're good there's at not, is not what you need to work on. There's there's also other things about the practice too that um, if you're not educated and you like, for example, the time of day, you do it really early in the morning. It's cooler. You know, you're lighting that fire. You're working with your internal fire energy. And here we got people out on the beach in the middle of the day doing yoga. It's like you're going to end up. You, I think this is why they do what, what they do with the yoga Alliance and, and the lack of education around traditional yoga is because if they can get people doing it without understanding mm -hmm. what it is or what it does with your body, it's going to end up having negative effects. And then yeah. they're going to say, Oh, look at this. Yoga has all these negative effects on your body. Well, it's because you're doing it in the middle of the day out in the sun. You're, you're not following the protocol. What Bryce just said, pose, counter pose, neutral. You know, it it is it is a a very specific um, pattern for a reason, and oh, very you know, much it, so. yeah, and if you don't, 
Yeah. I, I'm reading like three or four books on Ashtanga all at, at one time and watching all kinds of videos and I learn more stuff every day. You know, when I'm not practicing, I'll go through it in, in my mind and read some and, you know, like half an hour a day, do what you can. I'm, I'm really busy. I know a lot of people are re- really busy, but you can take half an hour and, and read um, or watch a video or, or whatever. And <clears throat> education is just so incredibly important because otherwise, I mean, I watched a video the other day on someone who, who was concerned, I forget who it was, who was concerned about what's going on with yoga and was saying different things and how there, there needs to be um, much better education on it. And, you know, he was going through and listening to all these different things that over time will make a person delusional. Yeah. When yeah. you have when you have this very, very powerful, very uh intense energy flowing through your body in an improper manner, and your nervous system isn't um ready for that or designed for that. It's it's designed for a certain uh, pattern or sequence, which is what Ashtanga offers. It it just I, I see what they're doing. I see it. Yeah. You know, and then, yeah. and then down the road, people are going to have, you know, doctors and blood work and all this stuff. You Church know, says you have spirits in you. You've summoned in spirits. That one pisses me off. Oh, yeah. I remember That's listening not- to this, this fundamentalist girl when I was a Christian at the time, a devout Christian at the time, back in 2020. And I was studying, I was trying to study books on Reiki. And I remember watching one of her lives and she was telling everybody how to release demons out of them because everybody has demons in them, which is false, by the way. That's totally false. And yeah. um, she was saying, she's saying how she used to practice like witchcraft and everything before she became a Christian and she got saved. I think she's a plant from the cabal, to be honest oh, with you. Oh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But she was saying, um, avoid yoga, avoid Reiki, av- don't have statues in your house of anything, like all this, like don't have crystals, don't have divination tools, all these other things. But what struck me weird is not even the whole Reiki thing. What struck me weird is I'm like, yoga? Why yeah. yoga? So I started to research on my own. It's, um, I thought it was 333. It's 233. Um, <laughs> but you know, I started to research on my own, like, what do Christians have against yoga? I had actually never heard of that before. I had been in several churches, never heard of that. And um, I was looking and I'm like, summoning in demons? This And honestly, my rational brain was like, that doesn't make any sense to oh. me. It was just a type of it's prop- exercise. It's propaganda. Well, yeah. if, you, if you, if you're going around and this is one thing that's really pissing me off within our truther community lately, like really frustrating me, they hear someone, we know 90% of, of the, uh, truther community is infiltrators. Most of them are, are parading around as fundamentalist Christians. Most of them are and they're infiltrators. I'll just say that. I'm not gonna say who they'll tell you, oh, yoga is demonic. It brings in demons. And then you go and you regurgitate that instead of actually pausing and saying, yeah, let me go research. Let me read the yoga sutras. Because if you read the yoga sutras, which is the 5,000 year old text, that is like the Mac daddy. Older than the Bible. It's older than the Bible. Um, that talks, it's Patanjali basically talking about how our thoughts fuck us up. And our thoughts are what's There's nothing demonic us. about that. There's nothing demonic about that. Your thoughts are what's screwing you up. And here's a way he was a scientist. He says in the beginning of the first suture that he's a scientist and he's studying the human brain and how our own thoughts and our own fears, again, back to that transcendence and imminence. If our thoughts are telling us I'm a terrible person, I'm a piece of shit, I'm a sinner, I'm never going to get to God, then that is going to separate us from our, our, from God because we're pulling ourselves away. But if we're in imminence and we realize the mind is a fickle beast and we have to start to control our own mind, then we're back knowing God isn't going anywhere. It's us. And that's what Patanjali is saying. And that all these things that happen to you in life are giving you chances to heal where you're not aligned with God. So again, I tell you, this yoga, these yoga sutras is a really bad business model for the church. Because if everyone practiced this, they wouldn't need the church. They are the church. You are the temple. Well, what's church, Bryce? What's church mind mean? Control. Church means mind control. It comes from the original word is kirk, which means mind which control. Which is mind control. And yoga is the opposite. Savior, 
savior means oh my god one who ha one who has complete enlightenment advice. one who yes. has enlightenment so it doesn't, doesn't have need to, to be back. born again that's what the actual word savior means so when they say jesus is a savior they're actually saying that he was in, he was an enlightened one and he didn't have to come he doesn't have to incarnate again yeah. that's all that means that's all that means and um and so so let's think about that if church basically means mind control yoga is the opposite of that it's as guruji said yoga is mind controlling capacities you controlling your own mind so nothing else and no one else can fool you so the practice of yoga is in direct opposition to the church yoga is saying you don't need all of that you're good as you are well yoga means a really what's the word that yoga actually means i had read it and i forgot what it was but it actually, i loved it a lot of people think it means to yoke but that's not what it actually means. No, I read something else about it. It means mental focus. To focus the mind. So yoga means to focus the mind. Yeah, trust me. When you're in a certain pose, you're only focusing on, oh, shit. I can't wait for this to end. <laughs> you're having a come to Jesus moment on your yoga mat. You're having a come to Jesus moment. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say like my, and I've said this before that I don't know if Stephanie, if we were talking about it, or I was talking to Shanti with about it. So like when I'm in India, if I have an issue in my life going on, that's a hard thing that I'm going through. And I, I want to go talk to my teacher about it and get his advice or, and I know this for myself. And I know this for my friends who have had private meetings with Sharat. Do you know that he never tells you what to do? So I could go into that meeting with Sharat and say, I'm just going to make up a story. Let's say you go into the meeting and you're like, you know, Sharat, I'm going through this divorce right now. I'm really missing my spouse. I just, I don't know if I'm going to get over this heartbreak, like all this stuff. He is going to give you a metaphor. Uh, one of my friends, I'm not going to say his name, was going through a divorce. His wife left him and he was really struggling with it. And he was really struggling with holding on to her. And Sharat said the most, he came back and told the story of what, and it was like one of the best metaphors. Sharat said, you know, sometimes it's like holding sand in your hand. You hold it, but the sand still just slips out and you hold and you hold and you hold. But what would happen if you just let go? How would your hand feel if you just let go? I need that metaphor in my life. I think sometimes. Thank you. Yeah, we all do. We all do. If you just let go, the sand's going to fall away anyway. The sand's yeah. going to fall through the fingers anyway. And you holding on, your nails are pressing into your skin. You're holding blood. But if you just release and let go, just let it go. And, and he was like, that was, and I've remembered that ever since. You know, with the jump through, jump back. We were in a conference. Um, some teachers th teach jumping through with straight legs. Some teachers teach jumping through with cross legs. And someone asked Sharat, which one is correct? Straight legs or cross legs? And Sharat sat there for a minute. And he goes, my Western students eat with cutlery. My Asian students eat with sticks. And my Indian students eat with their hands. Which one is correct? Mm. I like that analogy. And that was just for the jump back, jump through. How many, how many, you know, how do we say that? We, we can apply that to so many aspects of life. Which one is correct? It's just cultural. They're all correct. They're all correct. You know, it's funny. People talk about like, you know, there's, there are, there's a small percent of Christians in India and there is a church in uh, Mysore, St. Philomena's church. And I know the Christians in America would hate this church. They would want to burn it down. You know why? Because it's set up on the inside, like a Hindu temple. They set it up like a Hindu temple. And I thought it was fantastic when I went there because that's their culture. Mm. That's what they know to do. Yeah. Which one is correct? Like, that's what they know to do. Even though they had changed religions, they're still working in the manner of their culture. But a Christian from America would come in and tell them they were all going to hell because they set it up like a, like a Hindu temple. Which one is correct? Again, I ask you, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. And I, I know I said, um, you know, I was talking with Shanti about this. I was just so upset with all this, this propaganda. And I know, I know why these infiltrators are telling you not to do yoga, guys, because yoga is going to liberate your mind. They can't control. This is the antidote to mind control. This is the ultimate antidote to mind control. Right? 
And I was, and I said, you know, all the Hindu people that I know in India, and I know a lot of them, most of them are not affiliated with the school. I've just met them. I've become friends with them. They've had me in their homes. They've fed, fed me meals. They've loved on me. They've invited me to their family's weddings. Not once did they ever try to convert me to Hinduism. Not once did they ever tell me I was going to burn an eternal hell for being raised a Christian. Not once. Do you know how many Christians have told me I was going to go to hell for practicing yoga? So the Hindus, in my opinion, as a, um, generally speaking, are carry more of the Christ in them and behave more like the Christ than the Christians do, generally speaking. We, there are some good Christians out there. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, it's, and that, that teaches you a lot. Yeah. That the way people behave. Actions um, speak louder than words. And regardless of a title, I don't like titles. It's all what's in your heart and what you're projecting out to other people. If you are of God and of light and of love and you just want to help people and you really have pure intentions, your actions are going to show it. Yeah. But if you have darkness in your heart and you are very hardened as a person and you're very rigid and you're very hateful, it's going to show in your projection. And I have never been so, I've always been like, not threatened by Christians. You know, I, I went to church and I would be told, oh, you're living in sin too much. And it to me is like, well, what's too much? You know what I mean? We're all living in some sort of, to, at the time, my, my brain is like, but you guys aren't perfect either. I'm not understanding this. So at the time. Now I understand more and everything. My eyes are wide open. But this last year, I have been attacked, not as much as you, Bryce, but I've been attacked a lot. I mean, on the dark outpost, I can't tell you how many times I get called a witch from hell, all because I'm trying to help people. And I'm coming from a place of purity and, 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 and love and, and good intentions and everything like that. The last thing I want to do is harm anybody. The, 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 one of my priorities in life is to make sure I am a beacon of light to others who might be lost and, and are, are hurting or in pain, you know, to be helpful and to um, be that person that maybe can make that one person smile. You know what I mean? That's, that's a God. That's not of evil because the devil doesn't know how to shine a light. He knows how to imitate a light, but he can't shine a light. So, it all goes to actions speak louder than words. Well, and it's, and I will say my yoga teacher, my Hindu friends have never told me I was a witch from hell. Never. I take it as a compliment. It <laughs> just saying, you call me mid, a, a witch from hell. I'm just gonna be like, okay. So that means I'm doing my, my job right. <laughs> yeah. And it's that, you know, it's that judgment too. And the Bible says, judge not least you be judged. Yeah. Hindus don't, don't have a you. right to judge anybody. We, you know, you do have judges, like actual judges that might need to judge on certain crimes and stuff like that. But as uh, spiritual beings, we don't have the right to be judging where we go after death. That's that's on the individual. That's on their own contract with God. And in, in my opinion, at this point in time, I really think that I don't know if it's fourth density negative or third density. That's really the hell. I don't think there is burning for all eternity oh, at this point no. from all, all of the research I've been doing. And, you know, all the, I, I'll never, I, I know I've mentioned this before, but for those have, that didn't hear me say this, I, I haven't said it in a while. I just remember before I really truly woke up to everything, this might have been a couple of weeks right before I was driving, I got into my driveway and all I kept thinking is, you know, book of Revelation, doomsday. Like God is going to send all these people to hell, the people that I love the most. And it didn't make any sense to me. And I was really, really struggling with that concept. And I, I hit my steering wheel and out loud, I yelled, God, are you really sending all these people to hell? And God answered and said, well, what do you think? And I said, I don't know. He go, he, she, whatever. God said, okay, well, I want you to really think about it. And then you let me know. 
God wasn't like, oh, yes, I'm a wrathful, nasty, judgmental God, and uh, there are people are going to burn in a fiery inferno. You know, I was expecting that as an answer, but instead, God didn't just say yes either. God allowed me to use my intuition and use my rational thinking to formulate the answer. And finally, I said to God, no, I'm getting a no. Okay, well, there's your answer. Yeah. Very uh, clear as day, clear as day. And of course, I doubted it for a while. I'm like, am I really hearing from God? And But that's that doubt that I had about hearing from God really actually came from the church. And, and time and time again, I got the confirmation in my dream space where the ego was not involved. You know what I mean? So pay attention to that. Those who are still, you know, indoctrinated in this because literally it puts you in a state of, of fear and that's holding you down into 3d where you, your consciousness will not be able to rise up to where it needs to be. We, we're not meant to fear. Fear is for like, don't go near the hot stove fear to get burned. So you keep safe from the, hot, like that's what ego is for, right? Yes. Ego you know. brings in the fear. We're not supposed to fear things like death. We're not supposed to fear things like, you, you know what I mean? Well, that's, she brings up with eminence in this book. Um, people who practice eminence don't fear death. Yeah. I mean, I went from really fearing it to like, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's just a passageway. And I will yeah. say, um, one of the subscribers made a comment that I thought was brilliant. And she, she, she's been harassed a lot by, by Christians. And she said, it's almost like they want us under one world religion, which is the new world order. Hmm. That you have to believe this particular way or else we're going to burn you off the stake. Yeah. That's, a, that's the new world order. And I will say, I, my first trip to India, the first couple of months were really rough because you're culturally like shocked and your body's out of whack and you know, it's a lot of getting sick and you're in, in this new environment and you're learning. And, but after that it was Christmas um, and Christmas day fell on a moon day that year. So normally um, Christmas day, we would still have class because it's not a big holiday in India, but because we're a bunch of Westerners and Christmas day happened to fall on the moon day, a bunch of us went out on Christmas Eve and went to go, we went to a Chinese restaurant and we went to go have a big dinner together because we were resting the next day. And my roommate and I, we ordered a bunch of, it's all vegetarian stuff there because 80% of India is vegetarian. So nothing to worry about. We ordered all that. We asked no spices, but it was still just incredibly spicy, like to the point where we were just like crying. It was so spicy. So we got it all to go, which is funny because they didn't really have to go boxes. They had to put it in packs for us. Um, and we were in the rickshaw going home and we were like, we should give, we should donate this food because we're not going to eat it. It's too spicy. And there's not a lot of like homeless people. There are, but it's very weird. Like in Gokulam, there's not like homeless people. So we started walking around. It was dark outside Christmas Eve where we're trying to find like a person to give this food to. And we passed, we actually passed on the street walking our philosophy teacher, Arvid. And we asked Arvid like, Hey, where, do you know what a place where we can donate this food? He pointed us in a direction. So we walked over and we were at the edge of the slumps and there was this like hut trash house, with the light, like a, a fire lit. And we like, you know, excuse me. Of course they didn't speak English. They only spoke Canada, but we were like here. And we just kind of gave them the food and the father, the mother and the little kids ran out. And the father was like touching our feet. It made me so emotional for giving them this, this gourmet food. And I sat there and I was like, I feel like such an asshole for being upset about not having the newest iPad or not, you know, getting the best plate on, seat on the airplane. And literally these people are just so grateful for food. And we were on the edge of the slums. It was probably pretty dangerous for us to be there. It was dark at night, but we went back home and both of us sat there and we were like, we have to do something. We have to do something like that. It, it affected both of us very deeply. And so we started what we call the Mysore foundation. We started a foundation where every time we go to India, we raise money. And we bring all that money we raise. We don't touch any of it for ourselves. It all goes in. And we go directly and buy rice, buy school supplies, buy toys. And we take it into those slumps. And so every time I'm in India, I raise money. Um, if, if kids do need some type of medical care, we make sure we cover it for them. And between my first and second trip, when I was getting all the paperwork done to do this, I asked a few people to donate because literally $10 will 
take care of a kid for a whole year in India. So it's not like you could, the littlest of money goes a long way. And I asked some people to be on the board who I got the same response from these people. Why would I donate money to save a bunch of Hindu kids who are going to go to hell anyway? That's the response I got from Christians. That's disgusting. Disgusting. And one person told me, well, I'll donate money if you promise to tell them about Jesus. I wanted to smack them because in this process, I also found, got in touch with a person who owns a safe house. And this was before I knew about the SEX room, room carpooling. I have to be careful because you guys know it. It starts with a T. But I knew it was big with slum kids because a lot of the slum kids are born in the slums and there's no paperwork on them. They have no identity. And so, for example, with the parents, and this, these are like trash houses. Like these are not, these are like trash houses made of trash. I've been in them there. It's rough. So a lot of times these men and these women's like get, will get married and have kids, but then the man will run off. And they can't, there's no family court. There's no way to hunt. They're the untouchables. There's no way to, for the woman to then, so she has to then borrow money from the slum lords to, to take care of her house and her kids. And if she can't pay it back, a lot of times then the mothers will off themselves. One woman I got to know lit herself on fire. So then the slum lords will come and compensate the kids and will take them into the, the enterprise. If you guys know what I'm talking about. And so I started moving kids into the slum house myself or to the safe house myself when I understood that there was a child who was at risk, especially girls, I would be the one to then go talk to the owner and try and personally take them and put them in the, with the, with the guardian, the new guardian's permission, which was usually an elderly parent. And so when somebody's telling me this, that I'll only donate, if you tell them about Jesus, I wouldn't be like, at what point am I supposed to sit down and tell them about Jesus when I'm literally trying to get them into a safe house and they're three or four years old? Literally, they're about to be put into the most horrific enterprise that exists in the world. And you are narcissistic and that much of a psychopath that you won't donate $10 to pay for the rickshaw to get them to a safe house because your narcissistic psychopathic ass is that fearful that your religion is wrong, that you want to project that onto a three-year-old child, slum kid. There's something wrong with your faith then. There is something wrong with your faith. Because I guarantee you if it was flipped and it was us in the slums and those, the Hindus coming to help us, that wouldn't even be an issue. Mm. Wouldn't even, even be thought of. And if that's what your faith is dictating from you, then that's sad. It's sad. And you've lost touch with humanity. Because you know what? The same God that created you also created that child. Just, and put that child. I, I'm at a loss of words on even what to say to that. So if you want to call me a witch or call us a witch for doing yoga. So be it. At least I'm not, at least I'm not damning little Hindu kids to hell. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if that's the God you believe in, then we are not serving the same God. My God does, would never do that. A child is a child of God, regardless of religion, race, creed, whatever you want to call it. Religion's man-made anyway. Yeah, it's man-made to keep people in a box. It's, as Gandhi said, God has no religion. God has no religion. God has no religion. He created the people of India with the same amount of care that he created the people of America or Europe or Israel or Egypt or Asia. We're all so unique and different. And our cultures are beautiful things. The Indian culture is very bright colors. The dancing, the, the way they dance is just so beautiful. I can't do it as a white person. It's, I mean, the way they move. I mean, it's just, it's just so beautiful. But to think that some, somehow your culture and your belief system is better to the point where if people don't believe and behave like you do, they're going to go to hell. That's the new world order, honey. Yeah. That's not freedom. That's, that's what they're liberation. that's what they're programmed to believe. And I why, mean, why would God need to use fear to control and manipulate His children? God doesn't. That's a narcissistic I, I, trait, and the God is not narcissistic. At least the God I serve isn't. Exactly. I, I really like um, what the what a Course in Miracles says about sin. Sin is a lack of love, and it also talks about what's real and what's unreal. What's real 
is anything that can stand alone by itself. Light. Um, darkness is only present in the absence of light. Therefore, it's not real. Um, evil is only present in the absence of love. Therefore, it's not real. It's an illusion. It's a distortion. And I, I'm I'm just flabbergasted at what, what you just said, Bryce. <laughs> Same. It's disgusting. It's literally disgusting. That makes me just want to go into India and go with you and just help those kids. Oh, I can't wait to go back. That's the one thing I'm missing. That's the highlight. I mean, I'll Shrat go with you. Sharat <laughs> knows I do it. Like it got word got spread that I was like my off time when I'm not in school, I'm in the slums helping the kids. And Sharat got word that I was doing that. And he, um, he has a foundation too called the Joyce Foundation where they put money in to help as well. And I, he called me to his office one day and he was talking to me about it. He wanted to make sure that I had like, I have to bring, I have a rickshaw driver that I've got to know that comes with me. Cause he has to translate for me too. Cause the slum kids don't speak English, even though English is one of the languages of India, they, they only speak Canada, but also to keep me safe because it, it slums, there is, there is slum Lords. There is a mafia situation happening. And so um, he, the guy also makes sure that I'm not, I'm protected too. So I'm not kidnapped or anything like that. Um, but yeah, and I, I work it out with Sherat. Like when I'm there, if I have funds left over, I usually donate it to the, the rest of the funds to the Joyce Foundation. So if people donate money, then the rest of it that's not been, been used goes directly into another foundation that's also supporting. I mean, the government of India is, is obviously very corrupt as all our governments. And the slums in um, in Mysore and Gokulam, they have a temple. Like all these slums will have a temple in them. And there's supposed to be a, a person that comes and like, unlocks the temple every day for them to come in and do their pujas and this gokulam slum the guy collects his paycheck but never comes and unlocks the temple for him ever hmm. and so Sharat was telling me all of this and like how the government treats the untouchables and like you know the fact that and it, when, once, once i started doing a bunch of other people in and and at kpg my my, co my colleagues my fellow students my peers started joining me and so a bigger group started coming with me into the slums. And one day I had such a big group because they, they always want to always ask for country coin. Like, what's your country coin? They want to see your money, your money from your country. Right. And so one day what I did was I went and got a huge, I went to one of the stores and got one of those big maps. And I asked a bunch of my friends who are from all over the world to bring like a coin from their country. And we went to the slums and we had the kids all set around and we each took our coins and put it on our home countries. So the kids could see like where the money was from. And then we left it with them. Now, here's the real sad thing. When we go buy them toys, because they don't have a lot of toys, we have to damage the toy before we give it to them. Because if we don't damage the toy before we give it to them, the slum lords will confiscate it from the kids after we've left and resell it. So we always have to... There was this one little boy, I'll never forget. We had just... The, the government's also some, supposed to uh, provide rice for them each week, because that's the main, the main meal. And sometimes they forget. And so what we do is I go to uh, Loyal World, which like at their big grocery store, and I get pounds and pounds and pounds of rice, which is so cheap for me. It's like five bucks. And we put it in the rickshaws and we have the ladies go and get their buckets from their house and they line up and we pour rice into their buckets. And as we were leaving, I'm getting get emotional. Um, Todd was with me. He had been the one doing the, the, the rice and we were leaving. We, we were just leaving. And this woman ran out of her hut and fell to the ground and hugged hugged Todd's feet and was speaking in Canada and our rickshaw, our Mahesh, our friend was translating. And he said that that morning she was stressed. She wouldn't have enough food to feed her family. And now she has enough food to feed her family for the week. Wow. And that was just, just, and that was $5. It was $5, you know, and that, and that, that love, she didn't care that we were white Christian Westerners. We didn't care that she was, well, let me put it this way. She didn't care that we were white Christian Westerners from upper middle-class America. We didn't care that she was an un untouchable slum lady. And that moment was human connection and human love. And that's what matters. That's what matters. God has no religion. Culture is just man-made. Religion is man-made. Mm -hmm. But our souls are all fractals of God. Regardless of whether that's the soul in a multimillionaire here in, in America or a slum kid in India, it's the same fractal of God. 
Mm-hmm. And it is my hope that that's why I think I'm getting so upset because it's like in the truth or community, I'm watching us go from one controlling group to the next controlling group. When are we going to realize that it, at what, some point it's not, doesn't even matter about Intel anymore. How many more, how much more Intel can we take? We know what's not going even on. accurate. Not Intel even accurate. If, if, if you guys, if you guys want to help, if you really, really want to help, you can't wait for them to come and arrest all these people and put new people in office and all of this stuff. Because what, what that is, what that is like, it's like looking in a mirror and seeing the distortion in the mirror and trying to change the mirror. Mm -hmm. If, if we don't each of us look at ourselves and work on our shadow, the collective shadow of humanity is going to stay the same. We could arrest everybody, put new people in, and it's still going to be the same. If you're taking a sideline seat and not doing anything, you're contributing to the collective shadow. If, if you want to help, work on yourself. Just do one, one little thing and then do one little thing more and, and tell people about that and help people and encourage people. Just, just keep working on yourself. If we all work on ourselves, this stuff will go away. It will heal. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up. I and mean, yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. I love that mirror image. Yeah, that was a really good analogy. We're not, we're not replacing one boss, the new boss. If we yeah. want to get rid of this cabal, it starts with us. We're the storm. We're the storm. Why it's do you not, think we haven't? Fl- I firmly believe that we haven't flipped yet because we're not ready to flip yet. Because yeah. we're consenting by not doing our own work. We're consenting to the cabal. Yeah. When you're when you're watching or, or talking to somebody or you know you're you're listening, and you say, "Well, this person told me." You know, this has been taken over by white hats and 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 uh, and all that kind of stuff. And I don't care if they're truth or non-truth; it doesn't matter. And and I'm like, okay, so where are you getting that from? You can't just take people's words for it, okay? Really have to just, you know, this whole truth or movement thing, especially being that. It's definitely been infiltrated, heavily infiltrated. Heavily. They have literally gone from hypnotizing you with MSM to hypnotizing you with truth or videos. And there is an obsession. There is an addiction to it. I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody on the other side of the computer screen for a reading. And I'm not going to say names because this has actually happened several times. And I ask them. How many videos of truthers are you watching a day? And they'll tell me, oh, 10 or six or I'm like, okay, you have a problem done. Well, what do you mean? You're not working on yourself. You're just listening, listening, listening to somebody that's not you. Yeah. You're not doing your work. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're, you're all questions like, what am I supposed to do right now? What's my purpose right now? And my, and then the cards are literally saying, we're not going to say, and I'm like, I'm not going to say, because you're not ready to hear what you're all about. You're not ready to you understand. You have to shit. pregame. You got to heal. Yeah. yeah you got it. You got to fix it. You got to do the pre- preliminary stuff. No, that's why I get frustrated with the whole Financial system too. Sometimes, yes, there probably will be a new financial system because the Federal Reserve is part of that group. However, people are just sitting around waiting for money to show up. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like what? Um, yeah. I that yes, that's a whole another thing too. Can we talk just real quick about how poverty mindset um, keeps you stuck in your shadow? Yeah. Okay. Take let, it over. Let me give you an example. I'll use myself. I grew up in poverty. We were poor. We were so poor. My dad left when I was young. My mom went to school and worked. We were on assistance. I got pregnant young, started having children. Um, my husband at the time chose not to go to school. 
had dead end job after dead end job after dead end job. We were on government assistance. I've been on government assistance my entire life up until about three or four years ago. And this poverty mindset is such a prison. It is so difficult to get out of. <laughs> when I started doing my shadow work and getting rid of that stuff and my vibration was raising, I attracted more income. It, it, it blew my mind how that worked. It absolutely blew my mind. And the cleaner that I get, the cleaner that my husband gets, the more we attract. And, and there is abundance everywhere. If you look at nature, look at how many blades of grass are out in your yard. Look at how many grains of sand are on the beach. There is abundance. Every, how many leaves are on a tree? There's abundance everywhere. Abundance is natural. Abundance is normal. And this poverty scarcity mindset is something that is ingrained in us, you know, growing up. And, and the, you know, there are some, there are some families who are middle class or are upper middle class or upper class, but the majority of people on this planet are poor. Mm -hmm. And, and it is, it is a prison. And if you're struggling and, and you're looking at, Stephanie and Bryce and myself. And by the way, guys, I live in a rundown old farmhouse. This is the only room in my house that looks this way. And I saved for an entire year. And all the stuff in this room is used other than my computer. I got it from thrift stores. I got it off of um, Facebook Marketplace. You know, what used. Everything is used. I've had people comment to me, you know, oh, you can say this and do this. It must be easy for you because you guys have money. What? We don't have money. I dealt we with that too this week. I actually texted you girls. I was so freaking pissed off, like so pissed off. My dad used to tell us growing up that when you assume it makes an ass out of you and me. And I posted mm -hmm. a picture. I'll actually show you guys. My mom's parents I was very close. Oh, to that picture. By the way, that was a gorgeous house. I was admiring the house, but. Well, I, this is the one house that I've ever had good memories in. The one house. I went through terrible, I'm not even going to get into it. And I found this picture going through some old photos of my grandparents' house. And I posted it because when I see that house, I see my grandmother, Maxine, and my granddaddy, Bubby. And I still hear my grandmother saying, sugar sugar because she was from charleston south carolina so she calls sugar hey sugar what you doing sugar you know i, I love that i still i probably threw up in every room in that house when i was a kid like mm -hmm. i i think i remember i actually have a memory of potty training in one of those rooms because after i was born my mother had miscarriages so i spent a lot of time there with my grandparents now yes my grandfather was a surgeon they made good money my grandparents my grandfather died in the late 80s. My grandmother died in the early 90s. And someone made, and I shared this just saying, going through old photos, found this at my grandparents' house, so Southern, but this is one of the houses where I have nothing but, but get memories. I miss my grandparents. I miss them. And I hope they're smiling down on us now. I miss them every day. And I posted that to share it because I see love in this house. I don't see the fact that it's a nice house. It's my grandparents' house. And I had a lot of people make great comments. I actually ended up blocking the person because I just don't need that. I had someone making comments that how, like basically paraphrasing what they said, how dare I post this? Cause there are people who can't pay their bills right now. That's not what this picture is about. First of all, that's my grandparents' house, not my parents' house, my grandparents' house. Stephanie, what does my house look like? It literally involves a living room with a kitchenette, not even a full kitchen a small bedroom and a very small bathroom. It is very tiny. Her apartment is it's really tiny. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's warm and cozy, but it's, it's very, very, very tiny. Yeah. It's actually kind of hard for two people to even live in it. It's so tiny. Um, where am I filming right now? Am I in a what? studio? Where am I? Where no. am I? Filming? You're filming in your bedroom and you have a little desk and you have a curtain that is um is thumbtacked to the wall yeah yeah and my um, house can you let's talk about my financial background what's going on with me right now stephanie financially you have nothing 
I have nothing. I've had everything stolen. Yeah. Like there have been days where I don't know if I can buy food. Yeah. So the fact that that person said that is, is disgusting. Yeah. It's absolutely disgusting. And what they're, even if my grandparents were alive, I'm 39 years old. What am I going to go run to my grandparents? No. Especially if they were still alive, they'd be very elderly right now. They'd be in their 90s. So why would I take from them? So, like, th it's just, it's disgusting. It's gross. It's gross. And so that I think people are so programmed to think we're on a screen that we just have it all. I mean, I'll be honest. When COVID hit, sorry, I shouldn't have said that word. You probably okay, believe One that. time. One time, fine. Yeah. Um. And even before that, we were struggling. You know, we, we bought a house. And because it rolled over into the very next year, our mortgage abruptly went up $400 more than what we were told we were going to have to pay. 400 to us is a lot. And it was either rent a house for more money or buy one. Those were our two options because we had to get out of the town we were in because it was getting really like, it had a lot of stuff happening that is not good. And you know what? I never believed I deserved a home, but I said, okay, I'm going to just try. And if God doesn't want me to buy a home, it's not going to happen. And it happened. Well, after that, David's car shit the bed. So I had to buy a new car and other things started to happen. And the guy who owned our house prior, Jimmy rigged everything. So we had things breaking all over the house. So there goes savings. Okay. Connecticut is one of the most expensive states to live in. We pay for oil heating here, which is pretty much if you go into the diesel pump at the gas station and filling your tank. So for us, for three weeks of heat, it costs now in the regime we're in $600 every three weeks. So that means she doesn't have hot water or hot electricity unless um, they have oil which I think Connecticut's one of the only places that does is because I never heard of this. Before, we can't ever. even, we can't even fill up all the time now. So I have to go to the gas pump and get diesel and pour it in my tank. And so there's so, days go with cold showers only. Mm -hmm. So yeah, our hot water heater runs off of this fuel and we have almost gone into foreclosure. We didn't, but we almost did. So if that tells anybody, so if anybody is at, under my ass trying to say I'm wealthy and stuff like that. I grew up in an upper middle class family. I had, I didn't need to want for anything except what I lacked was the emotional stuff. So we're all, we're all missing something. We're all in poverty somewhere in life, whether it's emotional, physical, you know, so you can't judge somebody by a flipping screen. No, and I will say, if you're judging us, thinking we have money and you're angry about that, that's not a reflection on us. That's something inside of you that's broken. Like that person that left that comment under my grandparents' house, I did block the person because I didn't need that, but that was something in them that was broken. Mm -hmm. Most of the people got it, got what I was saying. Like I miss my grandparents. So that's something. So if you're feeling triggered by that, that's a trigger that you need to heal. And I don't have the answers on how to heal that. That's, a, that's the journey you got to go on through yoga, through Reiki healing, through journaling, whatever you got to do to confront that wound. I mean, I've had people get really pissy with me because I've only been doing tarot for not a long time. I'm not like experienced in this lifetime. I know I did it in a previous lifetime. I know, or else I wouldn't have picked it up as easily. But it's like, instead of waiting for Nasarja Sara money to come through, I had to get crafty with how it, to make an honest living, to make an honest living. I mean, I'm also going to be dabbling into things like Reiki and stuff like that so that I can even go into other modalities to help people, but it, like to further my education and things. And I read a lot of books and stuff. So I'm not just sitting on my butt, just waiting for money to come in. I'm literally trying my absolute hardest to use the gifts that God gave me you know, to, to help other. And I know like you two ladies are doing the same thing. Bryce, you're helping people with the yoga. I mean, you're helping people with your Reiki, you know? So, I mean, you gotta, 
everybody has a time and place when they can remove the matrix jobs and they can start dabbling into something else. If it's not your time, it's not your time and that's fine, but you can't just up quit and not just work on yourself somehow. You know what I mean? Money is just not going to grow on trees. But you can't run away. That's one thing too. I think people confuse like, oh, we're just going to run away to uh, the woods and just live there. I mean, if you got the money to do it, do it. But that's also running away. You know, we can't run away from the matrix right now. But Sean Stone and I spoke about this a while ago, and I loved what he was saying too. And Cliff High just kind of alluded to this as well. What, what's happening in the macro, what's happening outside of us is also a reflection of the shadow within us as well. That's what Emmy was pointing out. The underbelly, what we're seeing with the controllers is really the underbelly of our own wounds. No, none of us are out there doing whatever with the, you know, with the little ones, but but it's an underbelly, our wounds and not healing our wounds is what has allowed that to continue. That's the responsibility because it's all energetic. Like Amy, you said it beautifully the other day. Energy doesn't know time and space. It's just energy. I say that to students all the time when we think about the emotions we're trying or the thoughts we're trying to con control and observe and learn from in our practice. The thoughts aren't going to be a thought. Oh, I had a bad experience in kindergarten. No, it's going to come up as an emotion of all of a sudden anger is going to erupt. Sometimes the memory isn't even there, but it's the emotion. And so you think about harnessing all of that, those wounds, that anger, that aggression, that jealousy, that shame, that poverty mindset and not dealing with it. Well, that magnetizes. And if the whole world is doing that, if the whole world is not confronting that, then that shadow side almost conglomerates and allows things to fester like the controllers. Mm -hmm. And so if you really want to give the controllers the middle finger, work on yourself, yeah. go take a bar class, go take a yoga class, start journaling. That's giving the controllers the middle finger, take mm -hmm. your power back. Yeah. Now, you know what it feels like. If you've, if you've experienced abandonment issues, sh a pain, uh, shame, fear, we've all experienced it. Okay, good. Now, you know what it feels like to feel powerless. You know how you feel to, you know what you do to, to feel powerful? You take it back. Mm -hmm. And remember, guys, if you are, if you are called to the, the yogic path, all of our trauma and experiences and wounds and issues are in our tissues. Mm -hmm. They're in our muscles. They're in our bones, our ligaments, our skin. They're in us. And when we start to move, and the energy is flowing and the fire is ignited, that stuff comes out of your tissues and it has to be sweated out, has to be eliminated, it has to be vomited out, it has to be felt. You know, these feelings will come up and you're like, where did this come from? I, you know, don't try to escape it. Lean into it. Feel it a little bit more and, and it'll pass. Um, but just don't, don't be afraid when that stuff comes up because it will, it, it can hit you like a wrecking ball. Like I was this past Sunday, I was a hot mess. I mean, I was, ugh. I had to take pain medicine. I was in so much physical pain. I had so much fear and anxiety and paranoia and panic coming through. Um, I felt like I had this overwhelming urge to like arch my back. Like I wanted somebody to take my shoulders and put their foot in the middle of my back and like pull it back. So I was just like, you know, and it had, it was related to these emotions and I had healing going on in my heart space, you know, the arms, shoulders, hands, all connected to the heart space. And it's so rigid right here that that stuff had to, to come out and it's got to come out little by little. It can't all come out at the same time, yeah. you know, so whatever kind of shadow work you're doing, the emotions are going to come up. The, the wounds are going to be festered and triggered and, and don't be afraid of it. Allow yourself to feel your feelings are not going to kill you. A lot of us have this really irrational belief that our, if we allow ourselves to feel our feelings, that we're going to die. Yeah, I had that. I had that. As irrational as that is, I felt like I had to protect myself from my feelings. But yeah. once I started allowing myself to feel them and let it flow, feelings are just energy. Just let it flow. It subsides. This too shall pass. Nothing lasts forever. And the more you can, mantra is this too shall pass. Yeah. Five of pentacles. <laughs> Temporary 
but painful. painful. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's why, so that's why so many people get addicted to television, get addicted to YouTube, get addicted to watching all these truth or videos. That's what the, that's what the controllers know is because escapism. you'll do anything. escapism. You'll do something to avoid facing your own demons. It's that Simon and Garf, bless you, Stephanie. It's that Simon and Garfunkel song. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Mm. I've come to speak with you again. So that's all the pain and anxiety that you feel coming up is coming to speak with you. You know, in, in, in Indian, some schools of thought, the word demon means teacher, demonstrator, teacher, means teacher. You know, I did, when I did my healing with Shanti, she had me go into a, a space where I had seen a demon because I've seen them, actual demons. And she had me go back in my mind to that memory. And usually when I see a demon, I kind of back away and like, and she goes, no, I want you to get up and I want you to go and ask the demon what it wants. What does it want? And so I got up into my mind's eye and I went and, t- and the closer I got to the demon in my mind's eye, the smaller it got, it kind of cowered down a little bit. And I said, what do you want? And it just took my hand and it just pointed to my hand. And I told Shanti, I was like, it's pointing to my hand. And she goes, well, what do you think that means intuitively? And I said, my power. Because what comes out of our hands? It's creating. Energy. So it was showing me. And maybe at that moment when that, that memory of that demon, maybe that was a time in my life where I was feeling pretty powerless. And so let that, let it, hello darkness, my old friend, I've come to speak with you again. Let that stuff come up and tell you, ask it when your anxiety comes up. Because I struggle with anxiety too. So, okay, I recognize I see you anxiety. What is it you want to teach me? What is it you're trying to tell me? I see you abandonment. What do you want to, why are you coming up here again? What, what message do you have for me? Because as you said, darkness is just the absence of light. And so if you feel these dark feelings and you engage with them, you are bringing light to it. And what if, what if all these energies of shame, fear, guilt, jealousy, are literally just energies trying to heal you. What if the pain you feel is them wanting to leave your body? What if they want to leave? Yeah. But you're too afraid to open the door and let them leave. That's what Marnie Alton said that in one of her videos. We think we're locked in these cages. And then one day we realized the cage wasn't even locked. We could just open the door. Well, that's what the controllers want. They want us to be locked in cages. Not that they set for you it's you do it to yourself i mean if you're looking at the eight of swords energy yes, that's what I was just deck, the eight of swords i mean i wish i can find it like right immediately i'm gonna look through this as i as i uh, talk here but the eight of swords as i'm looking here is all about a self-induced blind spot a self-induced prison bl- uh, scales on your eyes you're not seeing the big picture and you're doing it to yourself. I'm hoping I do find it here in a second because I do want to show this so that people can understand because the illustration in this deck is just absolutely, absolutely brilliant. So the Gilded and Tarot? So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm using the Light Seers. My Gilded Tarot has been a bit wonky. Yeah, but it's literally a self-imposed wonky. prison. And so... When we don't deal with these uncomfortable emotions, and I know that feeling, Emmy's right. Like when they, I mean, I still have to like coach myself through it. When those feelings come up, I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I don't want to deal with it, but I have to allow it. Yeah, there we go. See, she's looking in the mirror, and right here, there's nothing on her, right? But she's looking at her reflection, and she's tied up and she's blindfolded. So it's like saying she did this to herself. Right? She's looking at her reflection and she is putting herself in her own prison. That's the biggest prison. It's not anything to do with metal bars. It's your mind. Your mind does it to you. Your programming does it to you. Which is um, what the yoga sutras are all about. Yeah. 5,000. Think about that. 5,000 years ago, these sutras were written. And we're still, as human beings, dealing with the same suffering. And that's what my friend Cindy said that. Uh, that Stephanie knows, you know, when you think about the path of the mystic, there would be no mystic without suffering. Cause when you suffer, that's when you ask questions. Well, 
I have a saying that I've been, I think I've been saying this since I was in middle school. And I, I don't know if this exists anywhere else. I made this up not hearing it. So I could be wrong. I, I'm not saying it's original, but I always say the one with the greater path suffers the most and goes through hell more than anybody else. So oh, if you've hard. gone through hell and you've gone, you come back out of it and gone through it again and come back out of it and gone through it again and you keep doing it, you ha there is something there that you hold a very important, remarkable path, okay? Because you cannot be a healer. You cannot be um, a yoga you, teacher. You can't do any of these things without going through the suffering first because you would not appreciate it. You would understand it. Yeah. Well, so and, it, 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 and you and I will say too, so when it comes to that suffering and that hell you're going through, you have a choice though. And I'm not going to say what happened this week, Stephanie, but Stephanie was at a point where she was at a crossroads this week where she could either stay in old patterning that was going to just give I'm her the same. I'm being tested. I'm being tested. Or she could choose to take a chance on a new patterning. Of, and it all came down. Now it was an action, but it came down to the way she thought about herself. Because all actions, you have to have the thought first before the action happens, right? So these old patternings, the way we think about ourselves, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. That's Which gonna stems really from a childhood wound. Yes. But she made the choice. Now, before she had been doing all the shadow work, I don't know if you would have even realized you had a choice. But there was another path. But you Probably said, not. And she made this, she did something really hard this week that was hard for her to do. And it worked out beautifully because she took a chance on a new way of thinking about herself, a new patterning. And close the door on the old patterning. Doesn't mean the old patterning isn't going to reach its head up every now and again. Oh, it already did. But she made it. She was at a crossroads. So if yeah. you're suffering, if you're feeling aggression, if you're feeling these wounds come up, you have a choice to make. The choice is yours. You can either stay stuck on that hamster wheel or you can get off the ride and come off the hamster wheel into a new unlock the door, walk out into a new, a new world a new timeline. And that is what I believe personally. That is why I think we haven't flipped yet. Cause collectively we need a, a bigger collect collective percentage of people to make that choice at the crossroads to heal themselves. Doesn't mean you have to be fully healed. You're never going to be fully healed. Even we in need the to stop process. projecting on other people, our wounds. So too many people are projecting yep. and saying, Oh, you shouldn't do this. Okay, so what 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 you shouldn't you be doing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, stop, well, stop accusing people of things and start looking within. There's so many people that are just getting like they're like sharks. They're just waiting to latch their teeth into the next thing that they don't agree with. Well, you got the trolls that are just like the troll sitting under the bridge just waiting for that person to cross over so that they can hurt that person. That is not 5D thinking. That is evil. Yeah. If you are sitting there waiting for the next person to challenge, you need, you need to rethink your, your intentions in this life. Well, you need to heal yourself because collectively we need a higher percentage of people to start doing their work. Just, just by starting to do the work, you're going to already start to, to change your vibration. As Emmy was saying, it just starts to, and then when the energy of, of earth has gotten to that certain point, then we can flip. It doesn't mean when we go to fourth density positive, we're still going to have work to do. Fourth density positive doesn't mean we're all going to be sitting around writing unicorns. It'll be a different cost. thing that different things will be facing. Yes. We're never going to be done learning and evolving. So don't think that once, if you're just waiting for a timeline fit, flip, uh, flip to the world for the world to be great, you're going to be waiting forever because the world can be great right now too. Even in this, even you're in still going to be dealing with things. You're just not going to have that polarity of like dark, dark, evil beings trying to program yeah. you. Law one says in fourth NC positive, we're going to have what's called a collective memory bank. So that means that what we're, there will be no dishonesty because we will be able to tap into each other's memories. So if I wanted to experience something to grow that I never experienced in my life, I could tap into somebody else's memory bank to have that experience in my memory to then learn from it. So if you've never been RAPED, for example, 
and you're in fourth density positive and you want to know what that experience is like to learn from it, you'd be able to tap into it. So it's a different, it's because there is no negative polarity. You're then tapping into the memory bank of people who went through the polarity of third density. You're also going to get your memories, some of your memories back from past existences as well. So it's going to be a whole different playing field of work to do, of work to do. And so if you, if, and it's and even in third density, like Albert Einstein, I know people talk about whatever, but this quote is good. He said, you can see the life in two ways, either that everything's a miracle or nothing's a miracle. It's your choice. Is everything a miracle or is nothing a miracle? And when you start to do the shadow work, when you really work through it, you start to actually become grateful for some of the bad experiences that you had because it brought you to a new place of understanding. And oh, that, yeah. that is kick-ass power. I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't gone through the stuff that I had gone through. So yeah, I think those things that have happened to me, they suck. It's not, it doesn't feel nice, but you thank it because it taught you a certain lesson to get you where you are now. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I don't know why I'm being um, led to talk about this just very, very uh, quickly. When it comes to things like waiting around for money, for instance, do you really think you're going to get this huge lump sum of money all at once? Think about what the human collective would do that has no idea how to manage wealth. Or hasn't done their shadow work. Because you know what else people who avoid shadow work do? They drink too much. They eat too much. They do drugs. Well, that's a root chakra problem. They you, shut, shopaholics. Yeah. When you have a root chakra blockage, you could literally have either spending. You could be ha uh, having... Uh, spending habits, um, like a shopaholic type of thing, or you could be a penny pincher where you don't even want to spend anything. So you hoard the money. It depends if it's hypo or hyperactive. If you read that what Eastern body, Western mind book, it talks about this and where does it stem from is your security, you know? So money has a lot to do with the root. So if you're not healing your root chakra, you might not be able to manage wealth. Yeah. So again, I tell you, I, on my opinion, we haven't flipped yet because the infiltrators into the truth of the 90% of the infiltrators have hypnotized people into not working on their shit, convinced them. So how many of these infiltrators are convincing you that money's on its way? They're convincing you, you don't have to worry. It's coming. It's fine. Don't worry. You're going to get a med bed and all of a sudden you're going to be a size zero. Yeah. Don't worry. Eat the chocolate, eat, eat the bad food because it's okay. The med bed's going to fix it. No. Yeah. Yes. If you're looking, if you're waiting and looking for something outside of you to save you, you're going to be waiting a long, long time. Yeah, absolutely. And you're not ready for a free world because you're still waiting for another controller to come in mm -hmm. and tell you what to do. We need to take control of our own selves. Yeah. If we have self, mercy. We've been talking for hours. I know. Now. I know. <laughs> I know we're like, let's just do an hour today and we get on the subject. So anyway, guys, well, it's so, all important stuff we need to talk about. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the 30 day challenge we're going to do in November, we're doing the yoga course, which is a private course. That's going to be intense. But then I have a 30 day again, like I said, in the beginning 30 day, cause there's 30 days in November. I'm working on the outline right now. And the next week, I'm going to have the outline done and I'll create a new email address for anybody who wants to do the 30 day challenge. I will email you the schedule with all the links. It's this, this 30 day challenge is really for, for people who would just want to start shadow work and they don't know where to start because it's going to be a guide. You're going to have to exercise like four or five days a week. I'm going to do different modalities of exercise from bar to yoga to dance, some kickboxing. So you can experiment with different modalities to see which one works better for you. We're going to have journaling exercises to do every day. Um, and you're going to have some meditation healing to do every day. Um, and this is going to be all for you. And so no one's going to be watching you do this. No one's going to be reading your journal. And it's going to be a way for you to challenge yourself to do these things, these activities every day to get you through the months of the month of November. So hopefully we can push this timeline over the edge and get us all healing ourselves. Right. And so at the end of, the, of November, though, if you register for the challenge, I'm going to take your name and put it in a raffle. 
and maybe three or four people will i've got i've got a couple of gifts that have been donated um just as something fun it'll be at, at random raffle so um so that will be coming up soon and then of course the yoga course we've only got a few more spots left i'll put those links down in the description box as well as well as uh stephanie's courses are going to be down in the box too so if you can't get in the description box i have this a couple of times you're like where is the link Look at the down arrow button, press it, or the more button and press it, and the whole description box will, box will pop up. So you know, it took me about a year to figure out where the description box was when I before I had a channel. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. I'm terrible at like, technology. What are they too. talking about? So on the right underneath the video, before the comment section, is the description box. It's not as obvious when you're watching YouTube on your cell phone, because I never watch it on my, my computer. I always watch it on my cell phone. So, yeah, that goes to show you how uh, savvy I am with technology. I mean, that's why just hit down arrow, hit the more button, guys. That'll show you the whole description box. So I get so many people commenting, it's not in the box. And I'm like, oh, you're just seeing the top of the box. Hit the down arrow and it's right there. So anyway, all right, ladies. Well, I love both of you very much. And I love all of you guys watching right now. Most of you guys are doing this. I know we're preaching to the choir, but go encourage your friends and family. Just to start looking at the, the word. We all got to work together doing this. We this can't just be one person. We got to all be doing this. We are, we are all literally walking each other. Bring off. in the storm. Become the storm. Join the storm. Like let's make a, let's make a freaking wow. tornado out of this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.